weeks ago, I just started this startup, Quantum Blockchains, uh, in some sense to realize my dreams about coming back at the end of my <laughs> career <laughs> to science. And uh, and that's uh, how it all started. I will tell you a little bit more about um, scientific progress and, and that thing. So the company, uh, uh, in a nutshell, is created in 2020, so three years, properly speaking. Uh, it went through a typical uh, kind of the incubation as a startup, despite the fact that I was seasoned uh, businessman. I started this process as a usual startup, and I really recommend to young people to do that because it's always fantastic. Uh, one thing that potentially is um, is good is that you can get money to the development, okay? And that was important. I uh, specifically tried to keep this out of uh, my collab, out of my private uh, situations and, uh, and and go through the startup like uh, story. Uh, after a successful incubation and a very high appreciation of the judges, we got a grant from PARP, Polish PARP, this part at the time was not that very much, uh, you know, in bribes, and not very much corrupted. That's a later story. And then we got, uh, after one year, uh, an investment of the LT Capital Fund uh, from Warsaw. S small investment, as you see, not big money for startup. But uh, what was good and what is still, in some sense, good is that valuation. Uh, which is in the startup language called pre-money value. I mean, pre-money value, if you don't know, is something that how auditors and investors perceive your value before they put any coin into you. Okay? So that was 8.5 million euro with zero sales. Okay? So we are very highly valued. The reason was that we promised a critical solution for blockchains, and blockchains in the beginning were on hype, right? So you know what blockchains was. Some of the people who joined the company even said that it could be next, uh, you know, this one billion dollar, which is called uh, unicorn or a company. Of course, <laughs> I smile at that now, but that was what we were hearing. We have uh, fantastic partners. So, so the first real partnership in the quantum photography, which I will be uh, devoting most of my time today, is q and Labs. It's the Indian company from Bangalore. So that's quite interesting. Uh, then we uh, got into co cooperation with Polish Supercomputing and Networking Center, uh, which is important in Poland for building quantum networks, but unfortunately it doesn't behave very well. And that I know from my other head that I wear. I am also chairman of the University Council of the University of Poland. In fact, post I see P PSNC, not very, you know. It's not a very positive uh, actor, but anyway, what we could do about that. A uh, fantastic company from Chile, Secure, Secure Quantum, actually. Uh, this is a company created in Chile and in Gdańsk. And uh, Sideral is now under another name. So that's uh, a group of companies which we started to cooperate. Um, what is maybe the most important, not listing all of them, is that in Poland, Thanks to extremely uh, wise people, there was a cluster Q or cluster of quantum technologies established. So it's like uh, today, I think 15 universities, uh, including our university and about 10, 12 companies. And they are, uh, it's a completely non commercial, a non, uh, uh, non business organization, how would I to say? It's consortium, free open consortium for promoting of uh, quantum technologies very important and very influential group of people. And when it was created on the open, you can also university was this famous guy, Professor uh, Arthur Eckert, uh, which is the founder of the part of the quantum cryptography. Polish, uh, that's true, he was candidate to Nobel Prize. He didn't win that at that time because uh, there was uh, a Nobel Prize was awarded to other people who created this domain before. Uh, and the uh, well, domain of the Entanglement and quantum information. Okay? And then Arthur created quantum cryptography with other people, and others. So I hope that it, the time will come that he will get it. Okay? But of course, uh, that's a very nice guy, uh, despite that. I, uh, how I, so that's our founders. I don't want to go into individual people, uh, five founders. Maybe the only important uh, thing to say is that. 
uh, this guy in the middle, uh, Shin Sun, uh, uh, was with me creating initial papers, which I will tell you. And before we started this startup, because of my scientific uh, legacy, I uh, didn't want to really to do business only. There was some preparation work in science, which I will be telling you what, what, what that was. Okay. Now, what really we do, what uh, kind of problems we solve, and how we got from blockchains to quantum cryptography. So first and foremost, uh, the big problem right now that uh, is the this uh, really, honestly, must, I must say, negative effect of quantum computers. Quantum computers have generally absolutely fantastic effects, OK? But they have also extremely dangerous uh, effect on our cryptographic system. And in this uh, world, which is fully digital, uh, let me give you an example. The real situation of computer is more dangerous to the world than nuclear war was or maybe the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bomb used in the Americans. As a result of scientific, I am absolutely serious about it because the disruption that can someone can do to the digital world now, as you know, can create really depth. I mean, it's not a joke. And everything in our society, like our phones, they are dependent on the ability to communicate doctors to, you know, to everything. And the total disruption that can be made to this system can make such an effect on society that the total effect may be stronger and worse than this world. I know that this strange sounds strange because there was a physical high energy action and many people died, unfortunately. But uh, that's uh, what we have right now with quantum computers is exactly the same situation. And why it is so? It's because uh, cryptographic foundations of cybersecurity are at stake. And uh, I will uh, shortly say this, uh, not a time today to speak about these algorithms, but uh, quantum computers uh, are uh, capable of uh, running algorithms that are specifically designed for some problems, and two of them are critical for cryptography. So one is the factorization, okay, or generally one-way functions. I mean, functions that is, are easy to compute into one way and very hard to be another way, right? Factorization is one example, elliptical curves is another, uh, digital uh, <clears throat> integer algorithms is another, and so on and so forth. All of them are now can be broken and are being broken. I will show you some progress on that uh, when I will get the, some, some publications. Uh, so, so this is uh, absolutely real. And the second part uh, is the ability for uh, accelerated search. This another algorithm is called Groover algorithm, and uh, this accelerated search uh, for cryptography may break or may be break. To say both can weaken standard cryptography, so this cryptography that is called symmetric uh, can also weaken hash functions. So, all these things that we, we hash a document, okay, and have like a digital stamp, right? So, this is very far from being broken on the horizon, but it's possible to weaken that. What weaken means, it means that there is a possibility to create a modification of this document, which is different, but it's the same. Stamp. The same has become we can say let's say hashes of the all these uh, hashes. So that's something that is uh, real. Now existing blockchains, as you see at the space, they completely ignore the danger, and that's crazy. Like whereas uh, I could count maybe on two hands serious, well serious maybe five, okay, no more attempts to protect blockchains from that risk. And all these major Bitcoins, Ethereum, and these guys who are making billions of dollars right? are too big. And they don't do anything. Uh, Vitalik Buterin on the conference, oh, it would be nice if somebody did that, but they don't do that. And part of the problem is not easy, uh, because that's from nature that we discovered. I will tell you, uh, you will see the way it's not easy. But the other reason is that there is a, is a pure ignorance. Uh, in the space of this danger. And people do not realize that something is coming and, and that's really uh, very bad. Uh, and the next, prob next problem which we try to solve is the pace of development of quantum business. So 
we discovered that to put blockchains on the safe space, we need progress on quantum components. And quantum components in itself is also problematic. And it grows slowly. But I will tell you why in a moment. So that's what, what are problems that we that we do. No, 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 no. The, the, I mean, this uh, no quantum cryptography is uh, growing slowly because it's extremely expensive. So, a pair of different devices that can support communication in chains of communication, not in chains, and as you know, it's a quantum network. So that's one reason. Second reason, uh, we only can use which are not perfect. So we are sitting here and we need to the pressure here to secure the pressure. It's a very good idea. I do the internet. But you know, these five tables are out there. So you have a table that goes from your apartment, perhaps to some place, like a one mile or something like that, and then it goes into the virtual cloud. That's not good for people to use. So people can use it or something called the dark fiber, a fiber which is simply a fiber or a, a part of them uh, of fiber, but still, if it is part, part of them, and not go to any situation or any way. So there are, cannot be any optical switches. Must be a part connection. So, uh, such fiber in uh, New York City costs about five dollars per meter or something like that per year. Imagine. So, if you have to communicate over miles, you know, it's another horrible cost. And there are attempts to do that over satellites, but it's such an early stage that nobody can practically do it until you are Chinese and have military money, okay? Basically, uh, as we speak, okay? So that's the story. Uh, so, so this progress is slow because of that. I will try to show what we try to do to accelerate that. Now, how it is happening, uh, what is really this danger uh, in a nutshell? I don't want to go into algorithms. My lecture today is not about school algorithms. We can discuss do that. Maybe my, by the way, I'm not the best one. I just know how to show uh, how to work. How far works, you know, I will decide okay, not to, to explain. By the way, to, to the high level, it's easy to explain. The lower level, when it comes to coding, it's extremely difficult. I did PhD uh, and thesis and master thesis from some universities. Well, the only object of this is how to implement for us in a different way. It's a, it's a whole big work required to, to this implementation. But what is important is that uh, there are signals that uh, this uh, level of the danger can come closer to us. Like, for example, Chinese uh, in the uh, January this year, they published an article saying that they can break RSA with only 370. By the way, it was not verified. So it stands out not as a hype, but as unverified work, unverified claim. However, the paper was peer reviewed, so scientifically is sound. The only story is that on uh, we have computers. So this is a little bit of, of, of sound. Now, uh, because of that, uh, the people who are responsible for security of the US system, like uh, in America, uh, US Congress, in is a huge legal movement. Like I, I mostly say to some people who are from America, so I. Uh, quote, American quantum computing cybersecurity preparedness. Uh, it is a public law from the past December. Uh, 
There is also something that I don't have in this slide. It's not again for everything. Which depends on what generation the standards for new algorithmic not quantum, post quantum will be finally available. The sound is the of the discussions and hearings, but it will be finally established in uh, June 2024. Now, uh, I, I, I am sure that you know uh, today what may I, I feel really crazy about it. When I started my career, uh, And they are really now in the cyber security background. So, uh, what really is the story of uh, this work? Just a second. Uh, I think that I need to. Okay, I will use mouse. Uh, maybe. Okay. Uh, so these articles here, uh, if somebody of you go into this, I will advance that to show that in ca and come back later. It's a paradox. Uh, it's an article that was written by R&D people from Facebook or Nepal, uh, which is very strong R&D, by the way, doing Facebook. And they found that uh, AI can be used to find post-quantum, Michal Gaida, I believe, um, <clears throat> to, f to find vulnerabilities in this post-quantum algorithm. So, so this, is, this situation is, is really uh, crazy. And all these free links in the down of the page, I don't want to go into them right now, they show that uh, this post-quantum algorithm can be used to AI, even if they are not directly by some outside channel attacks, which are extremely important. But let me uh, come back uh, a little bit to on this. Yes, I mean, this presentation. Uh, you can then follow that. Yes. What I would like to say as a consequence of this previous uh, slide is that uh, even if we do not believe in this Chinese study with 372, we have um, uh, extremely so sound extremely big work of Odette Regev. It's a famous cryptographer who was actually one of the largest post quantum algorithms. He co created a lot of, of lattice based algorithms, a special new kind of more secure algorithms. And recently, just a few months, few months ago, I think, uh, he published a fundamental paper. It's in an archive here. I don't know what the final paper will be, but that's how we, it goes these days. Um, and uh, he shows how to get short factorization algorithm even faster than it was before. So even if, if it was um, all of M squared, I mean, I don't want to go into the notation for convection, right? So it was, he made it even more faster. So it was, O of n square now is O on n, n to 1.5 meters. So that's the speed up, uh, which is important. 
And he shows not only the speed up in terms of the speed up, but also that the lower number. Uh, I don't quote here some completely high PR news. Like a few weeks ago, there was a fight that some famous photographer invented uh, how to uh, use a specific Shor algorithm on a standard computer, not on the quantum computer, some version of that. And that apparently can break uh, for algorithms. That happens to be a high, uh, as far as we know right now. But the remarkable thing is that these guys are famous photographers. It's a, like a, you really don't know ultimately. It's high for maybe there is some essence behind it. One story which is which is absolutely stunning. It's a history of photography from Italy based on Julius Caesar, right? Caesar. All algorithmic but uh, is a Sunday broken. I mean, whatever you do, right? There is no proof that any cryptography uh, is, uh, is, is safe, but quantum. Okay, so quantum cryptography is only because which has this notion of theoretical security. We can prove that it is absolutely proof, physical, and mathematical. Well, uh, yes, there are. In particular, they come from uh, mixing for security of some kind. I agree. Uh, I was with this uh, workshop on both university recently, but there is Magda Kodinska from the Roma Center. And she showed me like a pyramid showing that actually the methods that are being built today, the devices, are not secure. Nonetheless, you may find it in the other So uh, I just wanted to say that uh, people shouldn't really stay put, they should act. Oh, that's this Olaf Olaf Dragon efficient fund, where he shows that he can make it even faster than it is today. Okay. Now, uh, without AI, without computers, the most refined in two weeks, one of the second and not on any To say anything more, that's, that speaks for itself. Okay. Okay. So that's the situation. Now, um, why we should take it seriously? So many people say, oh, this, how to develop a method this big year, and we don't know when they will be available. Maybe 2030, maybe 2050. Who knows? Okay. The problem is if you go really to the uh, fundamental infrastructure of the Security. Okay. Ah, okay. So I must be closer. Thank you, Michal. Ah, yes. I'm sorry. I must be just closer. Right? Yeah. We had this mic before. So where is this mic? You remember we had this beautiful mic last week. Oh, but anyway, okay. I, I can stay closer. It's not a problem. Is it okay now, Michal? Do you hear me? Okay, my whole thing. Okay, anyway. Thank you, Bardzo. It's too lucky. Okay. Why we should take it uh, much more serious than uh, than anything else? Okay. Thank you, Michal. If you really go to the cybersecurity organizations, for example, in a bank, they uh, have the following uh, situation, which is called self-life. What that means 
is the time for which your secrets must be secured. Okay? It's not uh, important only that something is not broken today. It's also important that today's secret is not broken tomorrow. Okay? And there is this shelf time, which means how long in years the security can be must be preserved. And that we I don't need to explain that, like our account, right? <laughs> Cannot be displayed. Uh, and second is the migration time, which is absolutely horrible. I spoke to a uh, cybersecurity chief of Citibank, and he told me that this simple modification of hash function, MD5, which is still used by many programmers, right, for the hash of the object code, uh, was in use in uh, uh, digital signatures and everywhere until some year. I don't remember exactly that year. And it was discovered as vulnerabilities, so it must be replaced to SHA-3, S-H-A-3, this current hash algorithm, which is think is secure, okay? It took them two years. Two years to imagine, can you imagine that such a simple thing? It's nothing, it doesn't change anything. Now to show you, in the simple picture, how horrible is the migration to post-quantum cryptography is. The current size of the private key of the uh, elliptical curve algorithm is 32 bits. Completely enough, okay? It's 32 bits. We are still secure. The private key of the shortest dilithium-2 algorithm, which is this post-quantum algorithm, has 2050 some. 500 something, okay, bytes. Can you imagine that? So if you have a uh, computing system that uses keys of the length 32 bits, okay, and suddenly you need to replace them by, by keys that have kilobytes, okay, that is a problem, not only for performance, not only for memory, but many algorithms are not there. Okay, so the, why this migration time in case of the post-quantum cryptography is really measured in tens of years. Okay, like uh, this NSM that I quote in America says that ultimately full migration must happen until 2035. <laughs> Can you imagine that? So now if you if you add these two times, Y and X, okay, this is where you need to think if after Y plus X, you have quantum computers or not. And the old predictions say, yes, we do have in almost 90% of cases. So this is famous Mosca. Silvia Mosca is the uh, scientist in quantum computing of the Waterloo University in Canada, <clears throat> which I also uh, had pleasure to work at for a short time in, in my years. So that's extremely, extremely uh, serious situation and is universally ignored, so I can tell you. Yeah, we should just act now. Now, blockchains. Okay, we started as blockchain, so uh, uh, I collected a number of the interesting articles uh, about that. Most of them, if you just take these um, titles, Google, uh, uh, for that, you will find that uh, almost all are free. With the exception to this report on the right side, commercially, it costs about $500. But if someone of you is interested deeply in that and has resources, I strongly recommend to buy that because this is very serious. It's not, again, not a high P thing. It's written by one of the Navy, American Navy cryptographer, a very serious person. And it really shows how deep this threat is. So where this threat is, the first vector of attack, very simple, is that whenever you have uh, public keys exposed, and the, even if we use for addresses, hashes of public keys and multiple methods, there are uh, moments in the lifetime of any blockchain that public keys are exposed. So from public key, quantum computer can get private, right? That's this reversal is absolutely possible. So that's very obvious, simple thing, but more important in many ways is that because you can weaken the security of the hash algorithm, so you can potentially change the history of, <laughs> of the blockchain. I mean, going back to the past, right? And that can create a havoc uh, in these situations. If you like, on the left side, all well, these beautiful articles uh, what is the real risk about uh, for Bitcoin and Ethereum and uh, and uh, the risk is, is uh, real. So that's something that is, is really serious. Now, it's absolutely certain that because of that, 
uh, industry needs absolutely unbreakable uh, cryptography. And this both quantum cryptography, however you like it, uh, it's still uh, only a, a partial solution just because of this. So we need uh, quantum cryptography, which is based on physical security, but it's difficult, as I said before, and I will go into it again. This, by the way, is the uh, announcement of a scheme being cracked on, uh, on laptop. If you Google that, I think you will find it at, uh, on Quanta Magazine, a very good place for these two things about that. Uh, the, the, if someone is not a mathematician, not a physicist, you wanted to understand that, I strongly recommend a very popular book, a good book. Oh, by the way, it's such a pleasant book that anybody can read. So, this author is Simon. Simon is a great author. Uh, when I was a long time ago, more than 15 years ago, was teaching in one of the universities here in Poland, in Łódź even, uh, I used this previous book of uh, seeing to show the history of cryptography. It's really fantastic. But in this very book, uh, he, the, the last chapter is the, uh, the quest for cipher is over. We finally have the cipher broken. So really, he believes in that and uh, something uh, like that exists. Of course, it's not easy, as I said, but uh, it exists. Now, if you also look into uh, other problems than security, uh, we know that uh, problems of classical uh, classical systems, classical distributed system, are huge. And one example, which cost the world huge amount of money and resources, and also has impact on climate, is the cost of Bitcoin proof of work. I am not joking. It's like uh, if I remember. Different estimates. Uh, the uh, most crazy estimate says that it's up to 5% of a total production of energy. That's probably exaggeration. But 2% is very so institution. If you Google what is a bit Bitcoin impact of climate, you will find some British organization that measures that. And uh, they, they show that. Because proof of work requires this huge amount of energy for computing or this proof of work, right? For finding these hashes and things. So, so, so that's like a physical proof that the problem is serious. What the problem is? Guys, the problem is extremely crazy. It's like, a, okay. it was, by the way, invented long before blockchain. I discovered this problem, okay? Long before any of these uh, things, it's called FLP. So it's names of inventors, I forgot these names. But there is another, uh, like a formulation of this problem, which is called CAP. Uh, and that reads consistency of a living What does that mean? It means that if you have distributed system, you cannot at uh, one time, at the same time, fulfill consistency. I mean, that the data is consistent across the system, availability, that you can access any node, and partition tolerance, so that it's uh, tolerant for you know breaks in networks, which happen. And this theorem is a mathematical theorem that shows that in the classical setting, these things cannot be satisfied. So we, we may go and try to invent consensus algorithms like crazy. We can you know, work hard and so on and so forth, but we will not break it because there is a physical, sorry, mathematical proof that cannot be invalidated, that that's the problem. Now, there is a, a lot of work including the work that we did in the startup, I'm proud of that say, uh, saying, maybe not yet fully baked yet, and the publications track is not fully, uh, you know, qualified yet, but it's very advanced work, uh, that if we apply quantum information technology, we can break this spell. And the very simple intuition behind that, I will tell you later when I show the paper that we wrote that started that work. But anyway, I wanted just to stress that security is not the only problem we have in this data. In this data world, we have also problem of making sure that the data which must be consistent is consistent. That if you replicate the database, if you work on blockchain, that every node has the same. And today we achieve that by this proof of work. And only, only. so that's why this problem is, is also here. So now, uh, a little bit of a history of how we got there. We started publishing papers before the startup started in 2009, 19, sorry. 
and that was uh, already uh, in this team of people who are founders later quantum secure permission blockchain uh, so th that was the uh, that was uh, around quantum information management it was on the conference it simply it followed by uh, one of the um, articles that we are most proud of. Uh, there is a funny story about that I will tell you in a moment. Uh, it was uh, in International Journal of Theoretical Physics, a simple voting protocol. So uh, that reflects also the mindset of my partner, Shin Sun, who is not only a co-inventor or inventor of many of these things, actually the foundation he invented himself, but he also works on something which we call the uh, mental experiments, okay? like uh, voting is such of the thought experiment, like Einstein was doing. So how we create vote on quantum blockchain, for example. So we were writing this, it was purely theoretical work. But what is the funny story about that? It was uh, published in 2019. And as you remember, uh, in one, 20, uh, at the end of 2019, there was the presidential campaign, uh, which brought Trump out of the box. Okay? And uh, uh, this article from Journal of Theoretical Physics got such a huge, uh, uh, yeah, how they call it, internet, uh, hit rate, right? So people were looking for everything voting. And because of that word in the title, it was such a movement that this journal wrote to us, the authors, we are so happy that you gave this title because never in our history we got such visibility. <laughs> But it was not on, about the article, it was about the voting. <laughs> so I was proud because I, you know, thinking, I don't want to you know, offend anybody, but thinking about Trump is a very specific, you know, thing. As, you know, I was quite proud that I actually perhaps, you know, made the impact on, on that. So that's the funny story about it. Okay. Uh, some other articles, uh, actually, uh, this article is the most serious one where we uh, literally put forward the basics of quantum secure blockchain okay, using the quantum. And then there was also lottery and auction, another thought experiments on the, on, on this thing. So that was, that was the initial work. Uh, then uh, there was this um, work to, uh, that somehow summarized everything we did and also added uh, some logic into that. Uh, uh, we were working at the time on the logical uh, smart contracts. Uh, I don't want to go into this because it's a side topic. Uh, so that was this thing. And then this work uh, is the kind of the like a loved work by Shinson. And, uh, and really, uh, there is uh, some great thing. What is Aro impossibility? It's another limit that is not known. Uh, Aro was the Nobel Prize winner in economy, and he proved mathematically that, uh, that in the classical system, there is not, we never can have honest elections. Actually, he proved that with a specific kind of uh, manipulation which are all honest. I mean, so you it's not manipulation like when you put some ballots, you know, <laughs> down or something. But if you if you really have the some number of people for you for whom you vote and some number of voters, but right, it's always possibility to get a dictator in an honest way. Okay, so actually to get rise someone who shouldn't be according to mathematics. I'm not saying anything about political views. Okay. Perhaps, perhaps. I, I, we didn't look at that from a philosophical perspective, by the way. We looked at it from the perspective of the Arrow impossibility film that has a proof, really, it's mathematical proof that that is, by the way, American system of voting with its electors was partially motivated by these things. So uh, they noticed that. I don't know what is the Arrow impossibility applied to situations like in Poland, Europe, or I didn't check that. But that's something that is certainly thing. And we also showed in this article that if you put quantum information theory and all these things that characterize uh, quantum networks, entanglement, superposition, and all these things, raise math, 
and the, in this article, you can break Carlos' impossibility. So you can potentially create honest voting. Okay, so that's uh, potentially a big thing. Yeah, it's funny, you know, but that's a big topic. Yes, that's right. I mean, the Shin actually is now a professor of quantum information sciences in the University of China and has a group of people. And if, uh, recently he told me that there are some investors who wanted to create these small quantum computers, like two qubits, but they're enough to you know, help in voting. You know, voting in China, uh, I told him, okay, be careful, okay? But anyway, his claims that uh, on the local level, it's okay. And that was this uh, logic programming uh, thing, so smart contracts, basically, that are protected by post-quantum. And this work uh, is the last uh, that was done uh, already in the startup. So uh, Marta and Miriam, uh, the women that work for quantum blockchains for Copernicus uh, University, they uh, mostly did that. I was only helping with some uh, elements of that work. Uh, but uh, what I would like to uh, say in this, that we tried to really uh, attack this fundamental problem of FLP capital dimension. And uh, we believe that uh, we are on the track. Uh, we uh, got a review that was not that certain, but nobody was somehow like, uh, um, you know, invalidating our assumption, our math. There was perhaps not enough of the substance yet to be published in a you know very well published article. So we are working on that. But what is the general idea? If somebody of you uh, know a little bit of this new quantum theory, you probably heard about GHZ. GHZ uh, effect, Greenberg and so on, Zeilinger, is a multipartite uh, entanglement. So like you have more than two of quantum objects that are entangled at the, at the same time. And the long story short, uh, if you apply this GHZ into uh, CKA formulation, CKA is conference key agreement. So it's like a, not between two uh, ends, but between in the group of people, in the, such, such a formulation, it's a called cryptographic primitive or cryptographic framework by uh, some Italian scientists, recently even one of the most beautiful books on the key distribution. Uh, you can potentially create a mechanism which has a, a goal not to create a key that you share, but to really make a consensus of it. And that's what we did in this, this article, and we will be continue working. That's a kind of a diagram on which we invented. But what is the most important part of this article is actually that's uh, Marta invention. Uh, she is very good quantum uh, optical physicist, not only uh, Pure information science, and uh, if we have uh, funding, if we have money, we'll be trying to realize that in the lab, uh, because we have a conviction that if we create something uh, which is called entanglement in time through the method which is called time beam entanglement, you know, you can entangle things in space, but you can also entangle things in time, which is crazy, but it's possible. Some people say because of entanglement in time, you can go back into the past. Okay, but that's of course far fetched. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's that's known phenomena, and now uh, it is absolutely possible to create in the laboratory everything that you have in our article is physically possible to be built. Okay? We need to verify that and build in the lab. And actually, we have agreed with Professor Kolenderski of Victoria University that maybe under specific condition, we'll be able to use the lab to, to build and verify that. So I hope that it will happen. So, so this article is specific because it's not only putting the theory how to do it, but potentially shows what is the setup in the physical space, how you can uh, create uh, something like that. Well, there is a lot of aspects which uh, should go into this, which I have no time to uh, cover right now. Uh, so let me uh, only um, now go quickly to the blockchain, uh, how we build it, and how we from the blockchain. First, I would like to say uh, what uh, what we what our solutions to this problem. Are. So first solution for security of blockchain is QSB quantum secure blockchain. 
And I will demonstrate in a few slides later, in a moment, how this quantum secure blockchain can be actually secured using QKD, quantum entropy, and post-quantum algorithms, post-quantum cryptography. And all these three elements can be used to secure the blockchain. Uh, second, uh, we have, uh, uh, by necessity, uh, we, we invented something that uh, potentially accelerate quantum cryptography. Why? Because we were a poor startup. We didn't have 200,000 euro on to, be, to buy these devices. One maker of this India, they sent us these devices. So we had them for test, but that was still extremely, you know, crazy uh, occasion. So we had to invent something and we built something, which I will show you, uh, that uh, by the way can advance cryptography. We also have the Entropia service uh, based on quantum random number generators, which you can use on our website. You can uh, generate completely quantum passwords right now and use that for blockchains or any other field. And we have a lot of something we call internal RMD. So it's a, a knowledge graph for quantum cryptography. I will show you a few things about it. So now the core is quantum blockchain. So it has a very specific um, design, which looks crazy. Um, first and foremost, I need to say that will be explained on the next slide a little bit more about it. So if you have QKD in the standard formulation, you can uh, securely transfer keys from point A to point B, okay? You cannot pass that to other places because that's the nature of quantum information. So this limit of building networks is not classical, it's not cost only and fibers, but it's also physical. You have only point-to-point -point connections. So basically, if you have standard blockchain, which uh, has P2P, peer-to-peer, -peer, right? And so everybody can speak to everybody. You know, if you have N nodes, the number of edges, number of the systems uh, that you can uh, really connect grows with N square, like, like N square, right? Because it's just a piece of myself. It's just the Europeans. I'm sorry. Right? Okay. So, so basically, uh, if you have n nodes, you have n times n minus one divided by two <coughs> edges, as you know, connection with the <coughs> graph. So uh, for n nodes, the number of connections grow with us is square. That is prohibitive from the cost perspective, from the infrastructure perspective. So we were working a long time to find topology that uh, has a better scalability. And who by crook, we found that. And where? In the early days of computing. When first supercomputing were built, they were called hypercube computers. By the way, Intel had something which is called Intel hypercube. You can Google that and find that. Uh, and uh, basically, this uh, uh, works on the on the topology, which scales in a different way. I will show you that. So we said that quantum secure blockchain can have these specific parts, where the core of the blockchain is, for example, four nodes or eight nodes, which is the hypercube of two or three dimensions, like two to square or two to three or 16 or 32 and so on and so forth. And the core should be always with UKD, a true quantum key distribution, the very highest sec possible security. And they create like a core of the security, like a ultimate source of proof for the blockchain. Then you can use emulators. I will tell you what these emulators are in a moment. That's our invention. On the outer part, we call this mantle, which is F. And then you can have a crust. Crust is simply like an outer layer where you have access to all the information of a blockchain, but you cannot do a manipulation. You cannot post transactions. And finally, you also need, uh, of course, number generators to create the absolutely unpredictable entropy. So these passwords and keys should be something that nobody can predict. That's a very important part. And we need post-quantum cryptography algorithms for one thing. And that's it. Quantum cryptography is only good today, today at least, for symmetric encryption. So you have a key, you can transport this key securely to the other end, but then you can use this key to protect 
uh, standard communication using one time pad, which is theoretically secure, or AES, or any other symmetric algorithm. That's what it is. Quantum computer doesn't come with asymmetric setting. Oh. We don't have asymmetric yeah. setting. We have some theories right. about that, some initial work on quantum uh, signatures, but it's still not converted into any technology. So, so that's something that we need this three elements. No, so do to go back to the next one. No, 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 that was the first invention. Trying to build quantum secure blockchain, we had to invent uh, networks that are having less connections than uh, thing. And uh, uh, finally, also a very important part, we uh, made this with the uh, very uh, foundational uh, framework for blockchains called Substrate. This is one that uh, runs Polkadot. I will tell you in a moment about that. But let me go to that. So that's uh, our white paper. Our white paper was written in a specific way, not before the work, as many blockchain companies are doing, and then they raise money. We wrote that when we delivered the fund. So when we finalized our test net, that it was running and being available being on GitHub, we wrote the white paper to actually present a reality. Now, this equation in the bottom shows you uh, how the number of edges grows with the uh, size, dim dimensionality of the hypercube. Uh, so as you see, it grows uh, much slower than square. So that's very good. And that enables uh, potentially not only uh, build up of blockchains uh, on that way, but any quantum network uh, where you can save uh, money on quantum key distribution, assuming, of course, that you have some notion of trusted nodes. I don't want to go into this because that's a complicated story. But anyway, if you want to build a real quantum network, you need to adapt different topology. And I think that in our startup, we invented, well, we reinvented old supercomputing uh, topology called inventing that. So that's uh, how uh, hypercubes of dimension from one to five uh, look, uh, of course, projected on the surface. As you know, we cannot even imagine for dimensional hypercube, right? Because it's, we don't have mental capacity to that. So that's this, this is projection, it looks like this, it's quite crazy. That's of course still uh, three dimensional. So that's with what, what we can uh, do. That's how four dimensional is being built. It's actually a very interesting uh, mechanism for building that. Uh, and one of our scientists, Miriam made a lot of beautiful research on that. Also how to grow these systems, like uh, you have a, initial hypercube of dimensions, say, three, and how you grow this system in a, in a systematic way. Uh, there is a, a lot of interesting stories about that. I, I, I also, the another thing that was very important, which I cannot cover because of time, is that on this network, you still need to show how you communicate this key across the network, because not every node is connected to every node, right? There is a path. And this path must be secured, must be done in a specific way. So we, we invented an algorithm uh, that uh, is uh, presented here. So that's something that uh, was another thing. Uh, now, the beautiful thing about that uh, whole work is that um, it's not visible, but I know it's not visible. Um, this is Polkadot, one of the famous blockchains, Explorer. Okay. And Polkadot is a like another Ethereum, very rich blockchain. Uh, and our uh, blockchain works, literally works, uh, on that explorer. So if I just click on that, I don't know if it will show or not. Yes, I, there was a problem uh, we had. So that's, I hope it will work. Yes, so it's connecting. So we have a test net, a real thing. It runs on, uh, uh, oh, sorry. 
sorry, sorry. I uh, that's why I uh, initially wanted to have my own notebook here. To access that, you need uh, uh, some certificates or something. That's it. Yes, absolutely. It's yes, absolutely. I mean, that's a matter, you know. That's uh, but that's the, exactly what we would. Uh, I think is in public domain because it, indeed, uh, as a blockchain project is not hidden in our in our systems. It's it's fully available on uh, on this. So. The only this, this viewer requires connection across the firewall. Now, uh, if you now uh, have that, that's fantastic. But what is the use of that? And that was the problem for our startup. And our startup today is poor in a very complicated situation. We don't have money. Why we don't have money? Because in uh, September last year, as you know, uh, blockchains collapsed and the FTX collapsed. Right? And, uh, you know, this whole space was doomed as an untrusted space for investors, because there was this guy, uh, Bankman, Fried Bankman, who is now in jail, right? And all these things happened. And actually, they uh, simply wiped out investors out of this space, literally. I don't say that this year there is another thing on which investors are jumping. It's AI, so that's another story. But uh, coming out of blockchain space is a, is a factor. And we actually... We also try to change the name and do millions of things because uh, no, it, it's not a problem of hybrid, not hybrid quantum or quantum. The problem is that that if, for example, in April I am in Boston and I, on the way to Boston, the quantum technology company I stopped in New York and I asked met with the, one of the largest investors who is Polish and he invests uh, in uh, New York. Financials. Uh, so hugely rich uh, man. He's such a person that if he invests on Warsaw Stock Exchange, it's very dangerous for the stock exchange because he can rise it up or down in one transaction. So that's the, I don't want to say any names. So that's really not, but it's a really big guy. And he told me, Mirak, nobody trusts blockchain. Just get the name out of the your company. So that's an advice. So we started the process. Uh, I mean, that's very bad because blockchains are beautiful. I believe in that. But still, this happened. So uh, before that, we were formulating what kind of use cases with blockchain. So what they could do if they are so secure, right? I mean, assuming that the security is uh, done, what is the use? So first, custody. Custody, if you may be heard, is the mechanism where you store your private keys, okay, for existing blockchains. Uh, wallets or store your documents is a fundamental system which is such secure that nobody can break into. And it is possible to create custody that are absolutely secure if you use quantum another proof. So that's one use case. Second use case is that one of the most important system which must be absolutely secure on blockchain is a digital identity system. Like, for example, in Europe, maybe you heard already, there is a concept which is called EUID, and we will all have that automatically uh, very soon. Poland joined that thing, and uh, our, uh, our ID will have that. They already have that, but they will be converted in the next couple of years into this global EUID, and everybody will be having that. It is really done with a fantastic way that means that nobody will be able to trace us because good digital identity system based on SSI, SSI is called self-sovereign identity. So identity that you control. I mean, you are identified, but if you do not agree to find you on this ID, you can make a one click uh, in the system and you are never found, okay? And it's never, it's again uh, by cryptography, right? So these uh, kind of the digital identity systems exist and there some of them are on the market like Sovereign network, they, they really exist and are, are, are real. So one of our use cases was uh, that thing. And we work, worked on that until our money were still not were available. So that's something that, that we can uh, restart when, when we are founded. And another application where the uh, huge uh, uh, security is needed is central bank digital currency. So if central banks will 
any uh, central uh, digital currencies, and the path is set for that thing. Of course, this blockchain story created a, a backlash in that, uh, but it will be a longer, longer path. But ultimately, I am absolutely certain that it will go because if you take this hype and these crooks and all these bad guys out of the picture, blockchain itself is fantastic for cryptocurrencies, for, uh, for any kind of a currency to go digital. We have two products now out of this uh, uh, thing. One is called PQK Depot, Quantum Key Solution. I'll spend the time on the next slides about that. And multiple source quantum random noise generator, uh, which is uh, both of them are supported um, for our uh, quantum randomness distribution services and quantum cryptography migration system. So let me uh, show you this. What you see on the right side here on this slide is a real thing. So uh, the, this beautiful design is rendering only. Right? That's, of course, the design of a product, and not yet in that form. But even having small money and not uh, enough resources, we built uh, something which properly could be called prototype. We actually not say prototype because it was validated. It's not a prototype, it's working version, but it's pre-production model, okay? So what it is, it is a device and actually let me... I want. So that's the real thing, okay? And uh, this little box uh, has qu a real quantum random number generator inside that we acquired from leader of the market in, in Switzerland, ID Quantic, and has processor. And some of you may recognize this box like a Raspberry Pi, right? It is. So not it's not a Raspberry Pi, but the processor is the CM4 of Raspberry Pi, right? Exactly. Why? Because of cost. So we had absolutely wonderful partner in Warsaw, uh, a company called Utonomy, and they built for us for such a low price that I am extremely happy and they were happy saying it was absolutely fantastic work. And it emulates a real QKD, which costs 200,000 US dollars. How is this possible? First thing, standards. So what we discovered, so to speak, is that uh, despite this state of development of quantum cryptography, one thing is fantastic. European Telecommunication Standard Institute has standardized QKD a long time before they were built. And they created at CQKD standards. So every maker of QKD is making them compatible with this standard, obviously, right? Because the standard exists. And it happens that this standard is a classical standard of communication. So we have built literally this Etsy protocol inside our software by our engineers. And we put that on one of these interfaces. Okay? Second interface is simulation of quantum channel. And of course, in the real life, we can put them both on one connection of internet, but the most secure setting is on the second channel. So one is the standard connection, and the second is the simulation of quantum channel. What is more, this simulation of quantum channel is protected by post-quantum algorithm called Kyber. So basically the claim is that this little device is not as secured as QKD. Of course, because it doesn't have single photons. You know, I said that clearly before. But it's as secure as NIST recommended post-quantum algorithm. So this gives security which is required by NIST. And this diagram on the left shows how you create the uh, this communication uh, with the uh, theoretical security. So if you literally on down, we don't see that because of this overlap. How? I don't know. Okay, anyway, let's not bother because that's okay, maybe that way for so if you if you have this device if it is between them. You need a network, uh, a VPN system, some other systems that are known uh, to create a the access protocol that is called works between these guys. So uh, and the most beautiful thing that happened to our startup was that uh, we uh, started working with German company Adva. They are now acquired by some big American guys. 
And these devices worked for three months without any single failure on their encryptors in the huge data center of this company. Okay, so that was very good. We are now talking to uh, another company in Poland, who is the distributor for Juniper, for uh, Fortinet, and uh, and uh, we hope also to speak to Thales uh, very soon. Uh, basically, we want to test that with some other uh, makers. Ah, okay. I'm sorry, because maybe I was doing. Uh, I, I, I don't know if we if we did what we already signed. But anyway, I was trying to be close. To all the sorry. Dziękuję bardzo, bo jestem zależny od tego, czy pan mówi do mikrofonu. Jestem. Okay, okay. We, unfortunately, as we say, we forgot to put this big mic here, so that's the problem. So the second thing, uh, which uh, is also in the same setup, so the same box with QRMG Quantum Entropy Network Source, it is built out of these simple uh, things which are uh, ID quantum quant random generators. We are very hard to get, but we were able to buy one. And that's a very exciting situation. And by the way, uh, you can go to this QRMG PCA.io. It's lost. Last night, so there is a, a little problem. Uh, but uh, uh, why uh, it is uh, recommended that you can go? Because you can go to application demo law, and you can request that, for example, uh, you want base, uh, and then you can get uh, these random numbers okay, of the uh, given length. I think that also So that's a bigger and so forth. Uh, there is, a, I don't know why it's only four, maybe because of the size of the screen. Uh, and they are really based on the real quantum level number that I showed before, and they are available uh, on, on, online. Uh, there is also an important part that we partner with many companies, so we can also source quantum entropy from these QNU labs from India, uh, real random, pure quantum from Chile, and on screen and that works okay of course uh, that also can be mixed this is why we say uh, multiple source and if you mix entropy there is a lot of mathematical statements that you never make it worse you make only a bit better so that's a uh, very different part. so basically uh, the uh, time spent on uh, random number generators maybe it is perhaps sounds crazy but you can't imagine how many problems in it were because of poor randomness you don't imagine that uh, when NIST, American NIST, created one of the pseudo-random number generators, they had actually a, a backhole into that. So they could go into, into that and predict the numbers that are going out. So actually, to be really secure, you do not only need to transfer security, but you also need to have that thing, which is called key, absolutely unpredictable. And the theoretical proof of QKD assumes that these keys have highest possible entry. So this is extremely, extremely important. Okay, these are, for example, are our, this is ID Quantic original equipment that we had in the beginning. This is Secure Quantum from Chile, and this is Tropos from India, uh, our partners. Now, the most important thing in our business plan right now, uh, on which we are uh, doing things uh, with the uh, well, now mostly applying for grants, but uh, basically that's something that uh, is, is high grants also a big thing for, for our business plan, is that with this device, we can create the migration uh, for quantum cryptography without high cost. So instead of buying a real QKD, people can buy our PQKD, which I am not uh, having any secrets. I mean, this prototype cost uh, 2,500 euros. Okay, so compared to 200,000 is nothing, and the production version is estimated to be 5,000 perhaps. Okay, when we build these production grade uh, devices, so this is really nothing for administrators. They can buy it. They can then uh, adjust the whole other network, like encryptors, you know, VPN systems. TLS systems and any, any, any system that require <clears throat> high security of keys. And only when everything is ready, they can buy QPD. 
And by the way, because QKD costs grow uh, lo are lower in time, right? The more competition is on the market. We believe that if somebody started this journey now, when he will get ready to buy QKD, there will not be no longer 200,000. There will be 150. And by the way, one of our partners, a company from Israel, Quant LR, is already selling these devices for 100. So that how the price. Okay? So that's something that is uh, absolutely possible and realistic thing. We call it quantum cryptography migration system. And that's like an essence of what Christoph, you asked me for. I mean, uh, see how blockchains can lead to development of something like that. So this is, of course, not for blockchain. This is for everything. I mean, you can go to any two data centers and connect them. We have, of course, also deliver uh, uh, consulting services uh, on that. Uh, we had some good track uh, that we go to the clients, uh, show where the real danger is, how to also, uh, you know, make the analysis of the real risk, so, so to speak, audits. And the very important part, we also are uh, very familiar with all these regulations. So we can literally, in the consulting, so what regulations should be met at what time uh, to be secure or formal, not only any other. And a part of this story, which I am very proud, uh, is the quantum cryptography knowledge graph. Where is it our website? You can go there. When you log in, you will get that free version, but um, it's a little bit limited. So then you notify us and you can get uh, the full version. Okay. Uh, so, so why this is important, uh, this knowledge graph? First and foremost, it is a first known to us situation where we have uh, uh, collected all the terms related to quantum cryptography in one place. We put them in a hierarchy, which is called ontology. So this is fully semantic ontology or fully knowledge graph. And uh, our scientists, Miriam and uh, Marta, they wrote more than 100, something we call micro publications. So these, these are short articles like this on CHSH, uh, inequality, which uh, basically explains the basics of science. So this knowledge graph is a little bit more sophisticated than typical knowledge graphs because it is linked to the real uh, quantum uh, knowledge expressed in micro publications with reference, right? So that's something. That's uh, some references where we start. Uh, we are talking about more about, about that. By the way, on, on Tuesday, I was invited to speak on a, a finance summit in Warsaw Stock Exchange on the panel How to Make Poland Cybersecurity Center. Okay. Hopefully, okay. Hopefully, that I will be smart. Uh, what we are doing now, uh, so, uh, so today, despite these problems with funding, uh, we have made these devices, okay, I mean, real things, as we saw. Uh, for blockchain, we use this substrate framework, which is a uh, qualified framework, Polkadot, and we built uh, QSB, and it is on the testnet, available for test. We have this uh, Enterprise service, which uh, is the service on the API which delivers um, uh, randomness. By the way, we are now the final stage is a company called API3, which is delivering uh, randomness for blockchains generally, because blockchains need this kind of randomness already. And uh, there are two companies, API3 and Chainlink, are doing that, and API3 uh, outreach to us, and we, are, we have built all the infrastructure right now, so hopefully we'll be on their sites very soon. Uh, we also have this consulting system. By the way, this work that I showed here is as the subject of two patents. And uh, the first patent method of, in the device for secure encryption communication, this is about this. This patent is already fully qualified. So we just paid the final fee. Like, uh, you know, you go to the patent, they evaluate, evaluate. It takes like uh, one year almost. And they went, oh, it's okay. Now you need to pay. Okay. So you need to pay like 2,000 euro for European Patent Office to make these final steps and get you patent. Well, 2,000. 
Uh, but the whole process with the patent attorney is much more expensive. I don't want to go into details because my patent attorney uh, may be <laughs> listening or can listen that. I don't want to disclose his prices or make a work in the market, but this is expensive. So we use some grant money to do that. Uh, and it, it's money well spent. I mean, we, when we were working with our patent attorney, uh, despite he was not physicist, not mathematician, it's such a great work that I only can say if you have a good patent attorney, they will also help you to formulate your invention. It's really fantastic. I can recommend later not using this lecture. And the second is about the scientific work, I'm being quantum Kropinski agreement. With that, we have a little problem right now with the EPO. The problem is crazy. <laughs> the problem is that the results of the IPO found that one of the authors of the uh, patent, which is this Marta Mishashek, she wrote a PhD. She made a PhD in Copernicus University. And they found that uh, it cannot be patented because it is in the PhD. This was absolutely not right. There was nothing about this uh, invention in the PhD. But nonetheless, they write something. And now we need to respond. But anyway, uh, if some of you know these procedures, we are covered right now. I mean, since you put your patent application and it's accepted, even if the patent is not yet allocated, you have a protection from the moment you submit it. Of course, if it will be denied, then the protection is revoked back in time, but you have protection uh, right now. So that's very good and really fantastic, okay? So that's knowledge graph access, mm -hmm. and that's our uh, EPA. European Patent Office acknowledgement, that's one of the diagrams of the patent. That's, by the way, how we do that in the standard way. And uh, finally, uh, before I end, I'm good in time. 